This is a place where the snow defies the sun's intensity. There's only one word of importance in this land, survival. With the electric blue nights, the bird cries, the muskox, the wily old fox's tricks, and the polar bears. Greenland's wild sanctuary. In the vast expanse of this sanctuary, a solitary boat is dwarfed by all around it. Greenland's wild sanctuary stretches over 840,000 square miles. That's over 2 million square kilometers. Sledges pulled by dogs are the ancient way of crossing this land. Their panting and barking contrasts with the splendid icy indifference of the landscape. The musk ox is an exceptional animal. The Arctic winter drives many living things into hibernation but this huge and tranquil animal defies the cold by herding together for mutual warmth. It's minus 50 degrees. The herds are returning to the tundra where the wind prevents the snow from settling. By scraping at the earth, the musk ox uncovers frozen rushes and lichen on which it can feed. The musk ox weighs between 700 and 900 pounds, or 310 and 410 kilos. It has gentle eyes and horns hung low on its head. Its pelt hangs around its legs. Its coat consists of long, hairy locks which keep out the cold and damp. The calves often shelter beneath the coat. A herd consists of one dominant adult bull, several females and their calves. During the course of the winter, the herds gather again. There can be more than 50 of them. It looks like a white dot against the white of the snow, but the Arctic hare's disguise does not deceive the falcon. The shape and size of Greenland's animals determine their heat regulation. The amount of heat lost through the skin depends on the surface area of the feet and ears. The animals of this Arctic region are highly skilled at conserving energy.
The predator's wings are beating down on the hare, bounding across the snow. The only mammal to have spread throughout Greenland, the Arctic fox, is in his element. The fox is looking for food and must strike before the duck flies away. The fox's fur changes in appearance as soon as the cold season arrives. In summer they're dark, but in winter their coats become snowy white and thicken to give better protection against the cold. Their normal diet is lemmings, which they will kill and store away in the snow. But when lemmings are in short supply, they will eat almost anything. It is the vixen which digs her earth at the foot of the hills or the cliffs of the tundra. Foxes don't hibernate. When a blizzard is blowing and the temperature is down to minus 70 degrees centigrade, they take refuge underground and hide some of their provisions for use at times like these. But no animal in Greenland is safe from another, more cunning creature. The wolf. Reindeer, which are brave explorers of new lands, have crossed continents unharmed through the centuries. It's now five million years since the reindeer emigration started from its former home in Asia to its present home in the Arctic. To defend themselves from predators, the musk oxen form themselves into tight ranks, each of them becoming one spoke of a wheel, bristling with horns. In the summer, young bulls challenge older males who are in charge of the herds. Greenland's wild sanctuary contains seven species of land animals, the musk ox, lemming, wolf, fox, hare, bear, and reindeer, constantly on the search for reindeer moss, a blue-tinged lichen. Their wide hooves stop them from sinking into the snow. North, to the area squeezed between tundra and icebergs, to where the cold turns the grasslands and water of the Arctic into blocks of solid ice. It's time for a change of transport. These caterpillars, which grip the ice-covered soil, have been found to be the best vehicles to combat the slippery surface. In this land lives the lord of the Arctic, the polar bear. The ice, though, is not as thick as it first appears, and a hasty retreat has to be mounted. These footprints in the snow are the first sign of the polar bear. A superb male.
The journey must now continue on foot. The bear taps against the treacherous surface, which might give way at any moment. Its feet are covered with hair to give a better grip against the ice. He thinks better of it. Its eyes are shielded from the bright glare reflected from the snow and ice by a protective lid which acts as a light polarizer. Polar bears don't have a home territory. The shifting ice makes it too difficult to protect a defined area. But they seldom stray more than 100 miles or 160 kilometers. Their normal diet is seals, but here the bear is hunting for fish. The polar bear is probably unique in being the only bear whose eyes are not bigger than his stomach. In fact, this animal's stomach can hold more than 154 pounds of food, almost 70 kilos. However, in difficult circumstances, it is capable of fasting for several days, or making do with a few fish. Below the ice is a seal den with young pups. The bear has caught the scent and begins to reach the prey. One of its cousins is approaching, but any sense of kinship always stops when it comes to food. The visitor becomes more and more pushy. Although it likes its solitude, the polar bear is also quite gregarious. It doesn't matter whether the encounters last for one day or one month, so long as they're long enough for mating or the renewal of a friendship. During autumn and winter, these confrontations are playful. Bloody scuffles take place only in spring, when the males fight for the right to mate. And then competition is fierce, because there are never enough females to go round. Even in play, though, the polar bear can turn nasty very quickly. Every precaution has to be taken. A flight of ptarmigan is disturbed by the great bear's arrival. The bear's large body loses heat quite slowly. Its ears and tail are small. Although the hairs on its coat look white, they are in fact hollow and colorless. Reflected light makes them appear white. The hollow hair captures the heat of the sun and traps it, like a greenhouse. This activity removes frozen snow from the hair. They also have a thick layer of fat for extra protection. There are no more than 18,000 polar bears in the world. And although they are rigorously protected by laws, it's not always easy to enforce the legislation. They are often hunted and shot at from aircraft. During the blizzards, they will make temporary dens to sleep out the bad weather.
Two ptarmigan have found some buds on the branches. Their springtime brown plumage turns white in the winter and their legs are covered with fine down. It's the mating season for the polar bears, April and May, and the males gather together. Normally solitary creatures, they now assert themselves. The bigger and more powerful ones stand a better chance of winning a female and getting rid of the troublesome opposition. Getting close to the wildlife becomes more and more difficult so the journey continues by helicopter. How many people are you? Three. Three. Okay. Inland, a herd of musk oxen is driven by their search for new food. Ice cliffs mark out the limits of their travels. Seeing the outline of an animal on the snow is always an important event. Once winter has arrived, the bear moves off towards the ice flows to hunt seals. Since the Viking Gunnbjorn or Eric the Red discovered Greenland in the 10th century, the icy jaws of this continent have often clamped down on man's tracks. Only faith or blind ignorance have permitted the exploration of small areas of ice. In the Arctic, the survival of the flora, the fauna and the explorer is never totally secure. One of the most famous of the many explorers of this place was the American, Robert Peary. At the turn of the century, he made a major expedition to the region. He was accompanied by Matthew Henson. Peary had been taught survival techniques by the Eskimos of North Greenland. Amalu. <laughs> We are looking for a seal. The story of the Eskimo and the seal is the age-old story about the hunter and his prey. Sudden movement could frighten the seal and make it disappear back into the water beneath the ice, through the air hole it has created. Woo-hoo! <laughs> 
The sled dog is descended from the wolf and is well adapted to the cold. A typical dog team consists of nine dogs. There is a lead dog in each team. Particularly intelligent and perfectly trained, he understands orders and passes them on to the whole team through his movements. From the age of four months, the pups start their apprenticeship as sled dogs. They are put to work beside their mothers. Each evening, the Eskimos review their team. They regularly trim the hairs between the dog's toes to stop the build-up of ice splinters and also to lessen the risk of damage to their pads. The Greenland Husky is a fighting dog. At feeding times, they revert to their more ancient instincts. In the evening, the dogs are kept separate to avoid squabbles. Warm at night under their thick coats, they have no need of any other shelter. A brown head has emerged from the water. A seal is in sight. The bear is still some way off. It hasn't seen anything yet, but it has smelt something. The polar bear has a good nose. It can catch the scent of a seal at a distance of more than three miles, almost five kilometers. The approaching scent becomes more defined and the duel of the noses comes to a head. Balancing on one flipper, the seal hesitates and then lies down again. The bear is not thrown off the scent for an instant, though. The bear is only a few yards away from his prey now. The bear's meal has, for the moment, escaped. He's an excellent swimmer, though, and can leave the ice flow whenever he wants. The sun never sets during the month of May, and the unique golden light of spring in Greenland will soon turn his white coat into gold. Polar bears are amongst the few animals which inhabit the most northern reaches of the globe. They have adapted to live in the most difficult of conditions. And this is their sanctuary. <laughs>